Good morning, everybody. I think we're going to do an actual close-up this morning. I'm not entirely ready, but I thought that it was really worth getting this playtime on camera. Pay no attention to all the cat food stains, baby food stains on my pants. <laughs> we, don't, we don't have to pay attention to those, do we, kids? So, uh, the last couple mornings we've had playtime with everybody where we brought Silo in along with um, their brother, uh, Teaspoon. Teaspoon kind of belongs here, but Silo is uh, definitely the odd man out. And uh, he gets along just great with everybody, including their mom, Nibbles, which is really sweet to see. And it means that he's had a little bit of a chance to, to run off some of his energy, which is super important for him as a kitten himself uh he's got a lot more energy than his mom can can sort of deal with and uh in fact that that sort of uh bit me yesterday in a way I, he didn't bite me that let, me let me be clear that's not what i mean uh bad choice of words um but he did uh spend all day yesterday every time he would get a chance he would come running at me and he's got this new trick where he runs straight up my back like uh like maggie on her windows he just comes running from across the room without even slowing down. He runs straight up my legs, straight up my back, and lands on my shoulder, which is fun for me, but I can see how not maybe not everybody would go for it. And uh, sometimes it's a little shocking, too, because I don't always see it coming. Uh, of course, he's not the first kitten to, to learn that trick. So, uh, yeah, so he's had a lot of spare energy that he needs to, to sort of work off, and getting in here to play with these kittens is a good way for him to do that. He's also so gentle with them. He really seems to understand like how much they can take, and he will uh, he'll sort of pull his punches to, to make sure he doesn't overwhelm them, which is pretty sweet. And then of course there's the fact that their mom Nibbles, who's back there having a snack, doesn't mind him at all. Um, she still doesn't let the faculty come up close to her, but she'll let him come up close to her. So she obviously likes him a little better, and it could just be because he's a kitten, and you know she sort of recognizes that. Or it could just be because he's a real polite, nice guy, very respectful. And when she tells him to back off, he always does. So uh, the faculties, I can't always say the same for them. So uh, if you didn't get a chance to join us over the weekend for our... Well, mailbag didn't actually happen, but we did do a little news segment at 10 o'clock. Uh, whoop. <laughs> guess he didn't see that one coming but you can see she does not going to start trouble with him he just she just gets a little upset if somebody gets too close to her and then once they back away she's done which is an excellent excellent cat interaction uh that's that's something that she can turn into friends with anybody if that's her attitude where uh the thing you want to watch out for her then is if she wants to continue to chase him when he backs off and and continue to attack him even though he's sort of um, you know, submitted. He said, all right, I'm, you know, I don't need to be close to you. You don't want me close to you. I don't need to be close to you. He backs away or acts submissive. Uh, she'll stop. And that's, that's exactly what you want as opposed to some, someone that wouldn't stop at that point and would keep kind of going at him, uh, which many mom cats will do. Uh, and uh, that's, that's, that one's a little more difficult to deal with, but he, he seems to get it. He'll always back off and she seems to get it. She'll always stop when he does. So that's real good perfect interaction there uh and they do uh i was saying that you know she's she's much more tolerant of him and she is i i know you just didn't see it there but a lot of times she'll come up to him and they'll touch noses and then they just sort of walk away without any hissing or anything and that's a you know that's, a, that's the best interaction i think you can even hope for for cats that are strangers so Anyway, uh, I was just about to say that uh, um, some of you didn't see the news of Mailbag over the weekend. I got to get up, sweetheart. I know you're in my lap and you're being very cute. This is uh, um, Spork, by the way. And if you're watching the weight chart, Spork, you'll notice has lost a little bit of weight. And I think really it's just because she doesn't like the food that we're serving. And so she won't eat it. I think that's all there is to it. But we're keeping an eye on her just in case. And she's still... Uh, you know, healthy and happy, even though she's lost some weight. So I would, I'm not too worried about it at this point. Uh, just, you know, just keeping an, an eye on it. So I uh, just thought I'd mention that. Well, she's here and you can see her up close and how pretty she is. And she's going to want to drink my coffee, which we can't have. So, okay, now I have my coffee. All right. So, okay, one more time. Uh, let's try it one more time here. I was going to talk to you guys about what happened uh, over the weekend. 
and um, uh, the mailbag news that we didn't get to go to otherwise. And that's all about Teaspoon. Teaspoon's the big news item. Uh, Teaspoon here is the smallest. He's always been the smallest. He's the only boy in this class. And uh, he's always been a little bit behind his sisters, maybe a little bit more behind than even uh, being a little bit premature and a little bit younger than them would suggest. Uh, which I know I've talked about plenty of times before. And uh, he was pretty constipated last week, so it finally got to the point where we had to bring him into the vet for it. Uh, or at least uh, we thought that was justified finally. And we did, and they did some x-rays, and they found out, yes, he was extremely constipated, which we'll talk about um, in a minute. That has to do with the food that uh, that Spork doesn't like. <laughs> um but uh, we also found out something else about him, which is that uh, the doctor says he's got real big heart, um, which isn't as sweet as it sounds. Um, it's a little more literal than that. You know, a metaphorical big heart's a nice thing to have, uh, but an actual uh, physical big heart is not a, not a great thing to have. <laughs> uh, also, they think they saw some signs of what we call, uh, the fancy term for it is plural effusion, uh, but what that really just means is that he's basically got some extra liquid in his chest as a result, I think, of the enlarged heart. So, uh, you know, those aren't great things to have, but uh, we've heard from plenty of people over the last few days who've said, you know, my little cat or my kitten went through the same thing and, you know, they lived a long, healthy life or, you know, they still are living a long, healthy life. So it's not, um, it's, you know, it's not inevitably uh, a huge issue. It's just something we have to kind of you know, track and take care of, which we're doing. So, um, as far as that goes, you'll notice he hasn't been on the stream a whole lot lately. Most of that's not because of the heart. Uh, most of that is because of the poop. Uh, he still is not pooping as much as I would like. And uh, so I just want to keep an eye on him until I know everything is working the way it ought to be. And so that's why he has to spend all of his time in the other room uh, so that I can keep track of when he poops. If he's in here, um, you know, even with everybody watching, there's plenty of times that he'll get a chance to poop and I won't know it. Whereas when he's in the other room, he's the only one using that litter box. So if there's poop in it, I know it was his. Um, so that's why he doesn't get to spend time in here unless we're keeping a real close eye on him like right now. And as soon as we're done with playtime and I have to leave, he also will have to leave. Um, but I will make an effort to get him in here to play. And as soon as I feel comfortable that everything is, is going right, and we're getting, we're getting there, uh, then he'll be able to stay in here more often. So that's the deal uh, as far as why he's not in here. So uh, to circle back around, though, the, the first issue, of course, was that uh, he was pretty constipated, and that's what had us go into the vet. And um, it turns out that... Well, we don't we don't really know why it could be, you know, a sort of related to his condition or uh, just, you know, maybe not eating quite right or maybe just one of those things that happens sometimes. Uh, but there was one other thing that kind of turned up on the x-ray and it's not the first time that we've seen this on an x-ray. And that is uh, he had what what the doctor describes as she, what she thinks are uh, little bone fragments in his stomach, in his intestines, a whole bunch of them, in fact, uh, I'll share the x-rays when I get a chance. Um, I need to, to get them uh, from my computer and put them uh, someplace where people can see them, but uh, including DJ who didn't get a good chance to look at them yet. Um, so uh, they do, they look like, um, you know, little weird bits of uh, sand or yes, uh, I would say bone fragments, probably a pretty good uh, description of what's going on in there. And it's not his bones, obviously. His bones are fine. Uh, it's what we think will be, you know, little bones of uh, chickens or whatever goes into their food uh, that gets all ground up and is in the food. And that food being, of course, what he's eaten to this point, or to that point, I should say, was entirely Fancy Feast Chicken Pate, classic uh, chicken pate, which is the thing that we always serve everybody here and have for many years without too much incident. Um, but... This is not the first time that we've had a suspicion that maybe the quality of the Fancy Feast has been slipping a little bit. Um, that uh, I think that first came up like a year ago, and I don't remember who it was, but I do remember we saw it on the x-rays then, 
And the doctor was a, a little more mystified by it. I think it was one of the first times she'd seen it, where now I feel like she's seen it more often. But um, early on, we saw it, and she was like, I don't know what's going on here. It looks like bone fragments. Like, where is this coming from? And now, uh, when she saw it with him, she's like, yeah, you know, I, I feel like the quality of the Fancy Feast may have been slipping. Uh, we never used to see this, but it's become more uh, frequent since, well... You know, since a couple of years ago, sort of the quality of everything took a sharp decline, didn't it? Um, and uh, it seems like the fancy feast that we like to use is no exception there. So uh, we don't know for sure, that, of course, we don't know that that was an actual contributor to his uh, his issue. Um, but, you know, it, it might have been. And um, it was certainly, we don't think that that's an ideal thing to have. Now, they aren't dangerous, uh, you know, unless they cause constipation. There's something that, uh, like, a full-size cat would just pass right through, and all of our cats do, and I don't have the slightest bit of hesitation to continue to feed the fancy feast to the faculty until it's all used up. But uh, we are going to start fishing around for something different to feed them. Um, and in the meantime, of course, he doesn't get any fancy feast, and neither uh, are these guys getting any fancy feast. We've been feeding them the... RC mom and baby cat food that I, I feel must be pretty quality just based on the price. <laughs> it's nothing else. Um, and, uh, you know, the fact that it's pretty liquidy, I think, is, uh, is good for him and for them, um, you know, as far as making sure things are flowing right. So we've been feeding RC mom and baby cat. Of course, uh, we ran out last night. They, they've been eating us out of house and home. Uh, there's more coming today in the post, so we're going to have more today. But in the meantime, they're eating today they're, for breakfast. They're eating some very fancy uh, lamb food and some very fancy venison food. Uh, the, I think it's the, I can't remember the brand. I think Kiwi might be the name of the brand. I know it's from New Zealand. Um, and uh, uh, it's stuff that we ordered that, that we wanted to specifically try different proteins on a kitten that was here uh, some time ago. And we've had it, and it's good for another year. And I thought, well, there it is right there. That's got to be nice food. So we'd pull that out for them this morning. So that's what they're having. Um, but I guess the, the bottom line there is probably no more fancy feast for these guys, or at least not for a few weeks until their, their digestive systems are kind of fully online. So uh, so that's all the news, I think. that's uh, I think I've covered everything, really. And I've, like I said, pretty much all... Well, Pretty much all the news is about him. But, of course, don't forget, uh, the other big news is that um, Silo, where is he? Silo's up there. He's got his head in my coffee cup. It's empty now, so don't worry about that. Um, Silo and his mom are getting adopted together tomorrow. So this may be one of his last big playtimes with these kids. And that's pretty exciting. Now, I don't even know where his adopters are uh, coming from, for sure. I haven't looked into any of that yet. I do need to reach out to them this morning, though, and sort of uh, give them an idea how much of the endowments there are for them to bring back. There's a lot of stuff. Everybody was so generous, and it's wonderful to see. I'm really excited about them taking him and his mom together because they get along so well. She does not get along very well with anyone else. Uh, and she's one of those cats that, you know, like I was just describing, um, she doesn't necessarily respect when somebody backs off. She will uh, sort of continue to pursue them. Although she does have a, a nice limit, which I think suggests that maybe she could be worked with, uh, with somebody who's sort of careful. Um, which is that she will chase them out of what she feels like is her room or her territory, and then she'll stop. Um, so... Uh, I think that's something that's a, it's a good sign. It bodes well for her future and perhaps getting to learn to, to know other cats, but probably not for a while. <laughs> so, um, what else? I don't know what else. Um, <laughs> I guess that's, that's really about it. Um, It's so cute to watch Silo, who's, you know, three times the size of these kittens, playing with them. I think the adopter, I had asked, you know, like, do they have other cats or kids? And they had said no other cats, uh, but they do have, I, I want to say they said they had a dog, and they definitely said they had kids. And I think that's going to be really good for Silo. He's going to need some kids or somebody uh, so that his mom is not solely responsible for helping him expend all of the youthful energy that he's got. 
He's got a lot of uh, energy he needs to burn every day. Oh, hi. Hi, yes, you still got some eye goobers, don't you? Just a little bit. Hello, she's trying to touch the camera. How's that working for you? So that's a little sporky. You can see she's got a very spelt figure going on from her not wanting to eat anything but mom's food. Also looks like she's got some food on her head. Oh, yeah, uh, Cloudberry, uh, Lena, I saw, said, Ramekin's been suspicious of Silo. It's adorable. I, I haven't exactly noticed that. But uh, I have noticed, though, that Ramekin, surprisingly, is uh, sort of the most jumpy of all the kittens. Of course, it's still, at this point in their life, it's still very easy to surprise them and, and have them all sort of run and hide, uh, which is good. That's a good reflex for them to have if they you know encounter something they're not entirely familiar with. Uh, but Ramekin, most of all, uh, seems like at a moment's notice she will jump or uh, run to hide. And um, it's cute. It's very cute. But uh, she's definitely a little bit more jittery. Uh, what am I looking for? A little more nervous, uh, maybe, than the others. She's also a lot more fluffy than the others. She's got the softest fur of everybody, uh, like a big old teddy bear. So... Oh, uh, let's see. I got a message that just came through from Discord saying, have we scheduled uh, vet visits for the kids yet? And yes, that's a great question because we have. And these kids will have their first vet visit. Well, except for, obviously, uh, Teaspoon, who's already been once. He will be going, uh, but it won't be his first. Uh, this Thursday. That's, I think, I'm pretty sure it's Thursday that they will all be going to the vet uh, together for their vaccines. So that is scheduled. Also, we have scheduled, I should have mentioned, we have scheduled the cardiologist appointment for Teaspoon, where we're going to check up on exactly what's going on with him and get a professional um, animal cardiologist to tell us uh, what's the best course of action for him. And that's scheduled for not tomorrow, but a week from tomorrow. So next Tuesday, he will be going to see the cardiologist and uh, find out a little bit more about what we need to do for him. So that's also very exciting and uh, hopefully good news. And uh, I actually intend to call our vet as soon as we're done with this close-up and find out if that's good, if Tuesday's good, or if she feels like we should try to see somebody sooner. But that was the earliest availability that we could find. Uh, it turns out the cardiologist that we were recommended is uh, on vacation right now, out of town for a couple weeks. Uh, but we're told that this one that we scheduled with is very good, but also uh, scheduling a little bit difficult to get in for. So, so we'll see. And I do, you know, I should take a minute. I, it's been a long time since um, I've had I, sort of the opportunity to thank all of you for helping out with that stuff, as you do. Um, I've mentioned before, though, plenty of times that on our Patreon, um, you know. Um, uh, the, the money that is uh, sort of donated to us through our Patreon, uh, you know, it's for the kittens and it's for their care and that's what we use it for. And uh, thanks to all of your generosity, usually we have a little bit of extra in there and we put that aside uh, to use in cases just like this when we've got a little guy that's, uh, you know, that's, that kind of consult is probably not going to come cheap, but I feel like it's just, it's not even an issue for us to say, yeah, we can go right ahead and do it. And that is thanks to, uh, what has already been the generosity of all of you put us in just a wonderful privileged pay place, I would say of, of not, um, probably ever uh, needing to ask for uh, that kind of help because it's already there for us. And I, I just can't tell you how much I appreciate that. It is, it's fantastic. You're wonderful people, uh, all of our Patreons. And, and the people who aren't our Patreons that are hearing this are also wonderful people. I know you are because you're hearing this. And I know I've said it before that uh, just watching helps us. Even if, if you know, donating isn't your thing, I, I completely understand that. The economy right now is something where I, I understand more than ever why somebody uh, wouldn't be donating and that's absolutely fine. You 
you have to take care of yourself first. It's very important. Um, but uh, like I was saying, watching us, just watching and uh, just enjoying the kittens and just telling your friends about it is something that helps us a lot too. The, the whole reason that we do this is to get these kittens adopted. Uh, you know, we would probably foster either way, but we, we might not put so much effort into making sure that we share it with everybody. Um, but we do that to help get the kittens adopted and uh, watching us and, and you know, uh, sort of encouraging people to watch us and just enjoying the show uh, helps us to get these adopted because uh, even if you don't tell anybody, it increases, I think, our visibility on YouTube and that increases our visibility to adopters and that means that we get these kittens adopted out. So uh, thank you all for that, every single one of you. Uh, much, much appreciated. I hardly know where to point the camera because kids are just playing all over right now. This is, uh, this is, of course, Spork is the one with the little white paws, and the one that's all black is Spatula. So that's Spork and Spatula. Whoop. And uh, it's good that the kittens are, are sort of wrestling by weight class, because these two are sort of of a single weight class. And then Goblet and uh, Ramekin. Well, Goblet's over there playing behind the air purifier. Oh, and about to get jumped on by Silo again. And then Ramekin, you know, is this one here that we were just talking about being the shy one. And then we have Teaspoon, the, the only boy in the class, and Silo, who's the only boy from the previous class. And he, like I said, he's getting adopted tomorrow. It's gonna be awfully hard to see him and his mom, especially his mom go, you know, she has been, uh, you know, since I've been taking extra care for Teaspoon, she's had to spend even more time in her room uh, sort of without any company. Uh, she's, don't, don't get me wrong. We, I make sure that we take time out every day to spend some time and snuggle her and hang out. Um, but uh, even despite that fact, she's been uh, even sweeter than, than before. I think every day that goes by, um, she's, she's sweeter and, and better adjusted. And I know that, that probably taking a long trip to a new home is, is most likely going to set her back just a little bit. Um, but then we know that after that she just gets to settle in for the rest of her life and just get better every day. So that's going to be a, a net win for her. It's like wrestling a, a giant fluffy cloud, isn't it, buddy? Ramekin really is super fluffy. Yeah, uh, Deborah, and yeah, De Deborah, sorry, uh, says you also encourage other people to be foster parents, and we do. Um, I may not have said it uh, as much, but I know plenty of people have said they're encouraged just by watching us, and I definitely do encourage anybody that has the, the means to foster some kittens or cats, uh, especially cats, from their local shelters. They, every shelter I've ever known uh, can always use more fosters and I think most shelters, most responsible shelters, almost all the shelters that I've ever worked with uh, would say, you know, if they had their choice, every cat and kitten would be in a foster home instead of at the shelter. Of course. Uh, so they can never have enough. And it's also a good thing to do. And it's generally quite fun, uh, especially if you foster maybe a little bit older kittens than there's less likelihood of coming into an unexpected health issue. Or um, in general, uh, most shelters will also help pay for their care. A lot of shelters will provide all the food and litter that you need just to know that they are going to stay in a house with somebody that's caring for them. So, uh, you know, if you maybe don't have the means to, uh, you know, pay for all the care yourself, that's still a good option or it could be a good option, but, you know, discuss it, obviously, with your shelter. Oh, you're missing the school bus to the Kitten Academy. <laughs> anyway, I do think it's a great thing to do.
And I've said it before, uh, you know, if you are someone who uh, is thinking of adopting a cat or a kitten, uh, I think fostering is one of the best possible ways to do that. Um, if you foster a cat or kitten, uh, it gives you a chance to sort of get a feel for it without, um, you know, and find out how it fits into your lifestyle and stuff. And then if you, if you happen to be fostering one that is just right for you, you can do what they call foster fail and end up adopting the cat or kitten that you've been fostering. And if it ends up to not be just right fit for you, then you just uh, keep it until uh, you can manage to get it adopted out, which is nice. This is their mom, Nibbles. I don't think I mentioned her yet. Uh, not by name, anyway. The little guy wants to see if he can get a chance to nurse while he's in here. Yeah. She gets along pretty well with all the faculty so far. Um, she doesn't want any of them too close to her. But they've been mostly respectful about that. And if, if, she, if they do come too close, she hisses and maybe even takes a swipe at them. And then they back off, and that's that. So it works out very well. She hears somebody scraping and scratching a lot in the litter box, which is Silo, and uh, that could be a little point of contention for her. So I want to get up and make sure that she's not going to be mad at him for using her litter box. Well, it looks like she's not, though. She just wanted to see what was up. Hi, Silo. <laughs> and suddenly Silo. Oh, Jeffy, I see your pun there. Leash leash with an option to buy. Yes, well, that is kind of what fostering is like most of the time. Uh, also, there are some um, shelters that will set up a thing that's specifically meant to, to do that. I know some of the shelters in Illinois that we worked with would give you an option to, uh, um, they would call it, I think, foster to adopt uh, when you go in specifically saying, I'd like to adopt this kitten or cat, but I'm not sure it's going to work out for us. So can we set it up as a foster thing until we're sure and, you know, sort of get a trial? And, and they, won't, they won't necessarily do that, uh, you know, for, for things, I would say, cats or kittens that are in high demand. But uh, they love to do it when you've got kind of a hard case um, that, that they feel like might be difficult to get adopted. You know, they can say, and that, that would be another reason for you to do it, would be to say, oh, you know, this cat... Um, well, you know, take, uh, take somebody uh, that's got sort of an attitude problem and you could say, well, you know, uh, it's been hard to get this one adopted because it's got an attitude problem or because it's got a known medical condition or something. And you could say, yeah, I don't even know if I can deal with it, but I'd like to try. So can we foster it for a while and see how it works out? And if it does, then we'll adopt them. So uh, a lot of shelters will do that. Well, uh, I'd like to take you guys downstairs and get a chance to um, at least see uh, Silo's mom, Thimble, who's downstairs. But I've got some cats to juggle. I, don't, I really don't want to leave Silo in here unobserved. And I don't want to leave, uh, well, I don't want to leave Teaspoon in here unobserved, but for different reasons. So uh, I guess what we're going to have to do is get the goodbye waves from uh, both Silo and his mom on one of the micro close-ups. So we'll, we'll just have to do it that way. And uh, hopefully I'll get a few minutes to remind everybody how sweet she is during that same sort of micro close-up. Uh, Julie B, I see you asking, did you ever work with Helping Paws on Angel's Wings? Um, yeah, so we worked a lot with on Angel's Wings. They, they were um, really formative for us, and uh, uh, one of the shelters that we worked with the most, 
primarily because, I mean, they're nice people. They're all nice people. Anybody that, that fosters or that, that works with animals, you know, they're, they're nice on some level, no matter what. And the On Angels Wings people were super nice, uh, wonderful people who just showed so much appreciation for us. And I just loved, I loved working with them. They're great people. Um, and mostly, I think what was important that, that we didn't get from everybody was how accommodating they are, uh, something that we really require. Um, you know, uh, uh, most shelters are, are always sort of operating in a, in a place where they need more resources than they have. You know, there's always more cats and kittens uh, to sort of work with than they can. And as a result, some of them have policies that can can be a little bit tighter than what we like. Um, not, I won't name any names, but I will say there was a shelter that we worked with that, um, you know, we would say to them, look, we feel like this kitten could have an issue. Uh, you know, we'd like to take him to the vet and get him checked out. We'll pay for it. You know, can we just take him to our vet? And they would say, no, it's against our policies. You've got to see our vet and you've got to have it approved by us first. And it depends on whether we think he needs to go to the vet. Uh, which, you know, I, again, I can understand why they would have that kind of a policy. And I think it's probably really good for the way that particular shelter operated. But uh, it didn't work for us. So, uh, you know, we couldn't, we couldn't work with them. Uh, whereas on Angel's Wings, you know, they were thrilled to have us uh, sort of taking care of the kittens that way and, and not coming to them for resources all the time. Uh, so uh, it really worked out. And uh, you also asked about Helping Paws. Uh, we, never, we never had the opportunity to work with Helping Paws, but we did adopt from Helping Paws before we started fostering. Uh, that was where we found Smokey, if you remember Smokey. And uh, that's also where uh, we found Panda, but Panda was before Kitten Academy, so I don't think most of you are familiar with her. And they were both from, uh, we didn't do the foster to adopt, but they were both, we adopted both of them from sort of their, they have a whole room, or they did at the Helping Paws, that was sort of their tough cases uh, you know, cats that they thought would, would maybe never get adopted. And uh, that's where both uh, Smokey and Panda were from. So, so yeah, Helping Paws, I think that they've got a very nice shelter. Great people. Uh, Ninja Chris, are there photos of Panda anywhere? Well, I, I know I have photos of Panda, but I don't know that we've ever really shared any. Um, she was really sweet, though. She was a, a very small little kitten and, uh, well, a little cat, I should say. If I remember right, and this sounds impossible to me now that I've been fostering for so long and seen so many small cats, but... I seem to remember that, that she wasn't even five pounds as, as a full-grown adult cat. She was very small, um, but super sweet and feisty. I'll tell you, the thing that I remember that she loved to do was we had a, uh, a tunnel, full-size, you know, it wasn't a Jackson Galaxy tunnel, but it was the full-size, like, four-foot-long tunnel, uh, and it was one that had one of these balls hanging on the end of it like this, the tunnel did. And that ball that was hanging in that tunnel the, the, was her favorite toy. And so she would take the ball and she would drag it all around the house, the, the ball that was attached to the tunnel. And so she would come running up the stairs and down the stairs with that ball in her mouth and the tunnel just dragging on along behind her. And we're talking about this little tiny, you know, four and a half pound cat dragging an entire tunnel all around the house because she wanted that ball. Uh, it was it was really cute. Oh, hi, <laughs> did you see? Did you see Silo peeking up over the top of the screen there? That was cute. Good. Well, I'm glad he's getting a chance to nurse. That's probably nice for him and uh, probably kind of nice for her, too. 
We should wrap this up, though. I need more coffee, and uh, i got to shuffle some cats, and these guys look like Silo wore them out. Uh, at least these two are already napping, and I think the other ones are starting to settle down, so probably a good chance to break up this party. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Again, I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate everything that, that all of you have ever done for us. Uh, even if what you've done is, is watching, that still means so much to me. So I, I really do appreciate it. And uh, if you get the chance to tell your friends, if you think it's worth telling them, I appreciate that even more. And, you know, if you decide to join our Patreon uh, and therefore join our Discord, it is one of the best things on the Internet. But, uh, you know, no, not to brag. Um, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing to do, too. So for yourself. And I should say, I say not to brag kind of jokingly because, of course, I can't even take credit for that. It's, uh, I'm, I'm one, I don't know, you know, very tiny part of the giant community there. All right. Well, hey, we'll catch you guys next time. Until then, uh, thank you very, very much. And to quote uh, Ninja Chris, uh, keep it kitten.